in our last lecture we have discussed about the application of priestess in concrete and steel structure today's lecture we are going to discuss about the historical development of priestess to concrete although many engineers had proposed the idea of priestessing even early 1886 no one had based the idea on clear understanding of the properties of concrete Thus, all the previous idea had failed to produce the Prestas concrete except these two engineer. The one is Fresinet, the French engineer and builder who converted the concept of Prestasing into the practical reality. And the another engineer is the Mangel. This multi-talented Belgian professor combined his research, teaching and writing skill to communicate the Presenter's knowledge of Prestas to concrete to English-speaking world. Presenter lived between 1879 to 1962, and Mangel lived between 1889 to 1955. The idea of Prestasing came to Presenter's mind for the first time during the series of lectures given by Charles. on rcc element in the year of 1903 to 1904 so when we apply the loading on rcc element which will be go under some deflection which will create some cracks in the concrete and some tensile stresses in the reinforcement so presnet's idea is replacing the elastic force that are created in the reinforcement by previously imposed and permanent stress of sufficient value so this is the one bridge which design and built by presnet in the year of 1910 to 1911 so this is the flat arch bridge which is fans or uh, approach fans or 67.5 meters and the central span of 72 meter the idea of prestressing concrete was first applied by the president in the effort to save this levenshur bridge a year after its completion in the 1910 president noted that this a central 72 meter span arch began to deflect downward at an accelerating rate a flat concrete arch under its own dead load generates huge compressive force that caused the structure to shorten its length eventually it's deflect downward due to creep so he understand that this creep may eventually cause the arch to collapse so to prevent this he given one solution so the presnet solution was to position the jack at this ground point at exactly midway between this 72 meter span and apply the some prestressing force as shown here which will lift the arch little up also it will create some compressive stress in this uh, arch element since this portion of the concrete is already cast and it attained certain strength all the creep or at least 92 95% of creep in this portion is already occurred so after pre stressing there will be small gap uh, developed between this uh, two existing concrete at this ground point so he suggested to fill this gap with a fresh new concrete so after attaining this uh, certain strength so it will be allowed to its original position and it uh, allowed to take its load since this part of the concrete is the old one the creep in this part is already occurred so the new concrete only going to have the creep deformation which is very short in the length so that overall downward deformation is very very less compared to that earlier pre stressing so this bridge behaved perfectly until it destruction in the beginning of the second world war in 
the same concept this is the another bridge which also designed and constructed by the engineer Frasinet. the overall length of this bridge is triple uh, eight meter and the overall height is uh, 27.5 meter and these approach spans are very less and the central the main spans are the longest span is 187 meter so this is the reinforced concrete arch bridge so here there is no tendon involved but pre-stressing is applied in the same way we discussed so this is casted and allowed to occur all the grip deformation in this major portion and the jack is positioned at this crown point and the pre-stressing is applied and the gap is filled with the new concrete so the president's major pre-stressing work came after this bridge By 1928, experience with the Levature Bridge led President to propose the more common method of pre-stressing using high strength steel to put the concrete under compression. The President's method is using the metal with very high elastic limit. In present times, the President had established the need of high strength steel for tensioning it to high initial stress and apply them associate with them with the concrete of very low constant and well-known rate of deformability so this high strength concrete to reduce the minimize the loss of initial pre-stress this is the one bridge which was designed and executed by the president was the first major bridge in the world a build of pre-cost pre-stressed and segmental construction which was built in france in the year of 1930. the another bridge is the walnut land bridge this is the first major pre-stressed concrete bridge constructed in united states of america in the year of 1950 so this is the three span uh, pre-stressed bridge the approach spans were 22.6 meter and the main span is 47.3 meter this is the eye girder bridge the depth of 2 meter deep with the center to center spacing of the eye girder is uh, 1.3 meter So we are giving more importance to the Fresnet for the Prestress concrete invention. We should give the same equal importance to the Mangal as well because of this his work. So Mangal's books and writings clearly explain the idea of pre-stressing in terms of structural mechanics, whereas Fresnet's articles give more descriptive but less practical. And Mangles demonstrate in the way procedure already known by the practicing engineer can be used to design the member of pre-stressed concrete. But President insisted the designer to rethink the concrete structure from totally new perspective and different from the reinforced concrete. So, so Mangles is the very important person to spread the knowledge of priestess to the entire world and uh, is the main reason where is the con the priestess concrete is more popular <laughs>